instead of an intro Instead of an introduction, I'm going to give you, I'm going to set things clear from the very beginning. What's the difference between anti and counter piracy? Now, anti piracy is about elimination. In other words, medium to long term perspective, strategic national, regional, and international character. Now, in other words, this is a pipe dream. Cannot be done. Just to remind you that uh, prostitution, along with piracy, have been around for two and a half millennia. <laughs> I mean, good old Julie, Julie stands for Julius Caesar, was taken hostage by North Africa Corsairs. I mean, the guy had a character to match. He was taken hostage by pirates. He was ransomed. He paid the ransom. He went back, killed them. All right? So this is nothing new. Now, moving on, counter piracy is about containment. Now, this is more down to earth. This is short term and medium term, tactical operational, private, national, regional, and international character. Now, this brief is going to be about the latter. And from the top of my head, when it comes to East Africa, believe it or not, 99.5% of the funds spent on counter piracy go to this, 99.5% talking about strategy. Now, triggers of global supply chain. Environment, geopolitics, somewhere over here, maritime piracy. Remember, this picture is about perception. What the general public, lay people, think of maritime security and piracy. This is what we call a vortex issue. And why do we call it a vortex issue? Because something pops in the middle of the ocean, Atlantic, uh, wherever, makes the headlines for a few days, couple of weeks, and then dies out. Nobody remembers a thing about it, but two groups, seafarers, the families, and a few high-level managers working for shipping companies. God bless. Clear? Now, broad picture. Hotbeds of piracy. West Africa, GOG, Gulf of Guinea. East Africa, mainly Somalia, Malacca Straits. You know, we people tend to forget. And psychologists claim that when it comes to the academia, the academic audience, on an average basis, forgets in less than seven days. Now, to make it simple, that means that in seven days from now, you will have forgotten everything I'm presenting. All right? I mean, everything, you will have forgotten the very fact that you are here. That said, again, I strongly urge you to remember one thing. If there is one thing for you to remember when you leave this room is the following one. What you are looking at over there is just the tip of the iceberg. So, just to scratch on the surface a little bit and still give you the tip of the iceberg. Cocaine, Latin America, making its way to Europe. <coughs> Ivory, from East Africa to West Africa, on to Southeast Asia. All these crimes, they are seaborne crimes. By the way, the first one, cocaine, is a 
$1.5 billion business a year. All right? The second one is a $30 million business a year. The third one, arms from the peninsula onto East Africa. Don't ask me what's the turnover for this business. Humans, human trafficking from East Africa to the peninsula. Heroin from East Africa to Europe, sorry, from the subcontinent onto East Africa and from East Africa to Europe and the Southeast Asia. Now, this last one I'm going to show you is probably the best, and believe it or not, I'm not kidding here, it's, the, it's a very tasty one. Any idea what does IUUF stand for? Illegal, uncontrolled, unreported fishing. You are looking at a $2 billion business a year. <coughs> All right? So next time somebody walks up to you and starts talking about piracy and maritime security, think about this picture. And remember, this is still the tip of the iceberg. Cracking on. The context, Africa. What you are looking at here is a huge cake, chocolate cake. Everybody can make big money, all right? The one who makes most of it, Ethiopia over here and Angola. Just to give you the context. Failed states, excellent research. If you want to access it, I'm giving you here the link, all right? By chance, piracy's hotbeds worldwide are mostly failed states. Something to mull over. Remember, when it comes to maritime security, this is not a linear world. This is a world full of curves. So you think you are dealing with whatever kind of crime, pirates, whatever. And in fact, you are dealing with jacks of all trades. One year, they play piracy. Next year, they play cocaine. The following year, they play unregulated fishing. Remember, you are dealing with jacks of all trades. The business models. East Africa. I'm talking about Somalia in this case. Unstable government, if there is a government. Well, West Africa, stable. East Africa, this is a good one. Pockets of governance, West Africa. Pockets of lawlessness. East Africa, destitution. West Africa, well, fairly close. They are doing a good job. They are poor. And of course, in both cases, quasi-military trained personnel. Last but not least, this last one over here is the best. No, it's the following one. Very low geographic concentration, medium-high geographic concentration in West Africa. And this one, my favorite one, I love it. I get a kick out of it. Massive corruption in both cases. Ladies and gents, you are looking at the common denominator of seaborne crime all over the world. Not only in West and or East Africa. Operations, opportunistic attacks, East Africa, well-planned attacks, West Africa. All kinds of ships, mostly crude oil tankers, West Africa. Use of weapons in both cases. Use of motherships, East Africa. No use of motherships, West Africa. Hostages, in most of the cases, they keep the poor um, uh, seafarers for months in East Africa. At least they used to, or at least we used to know of. West Africa hostages for a few days. And ransoms, East Africa go up to a few million bucks. West Africa, mostly cargo theft. Now mostly, this is just like a rule of thumb, all right? Counter piracy. East Africa, international naval ops operations. West Africa, national. We have sovereign states there, regimented, well-structured states there. And some of them are signatories to UNCLOS. So this is not the wild, wild west of East Africa. 
you play by the rules there or you get taken down and out. National and regional land operations, mostly national land operations in West Africa, prosecution and or capture and release policy in East Africa, prosecution, mainstream prosecution, mainstream corrupted prosecution in West Africa for all it matters, PCASPs in East Africa, mostly national militaries or proxy PCASPs. And of course, in East Africa, the Djibouti Code, West Africa, Yaoundé Summit was uh, signed a few months ago in, in uh, June 2013. All right, protective measures, hardening the vessel, passive, most of you have heard. Armed security personnel, sonic and laser cannons, barbed wire, blocked entrances, lubricant form, and safe room, citadels. The human factor. Oh, I love this. I love this motto. I just love it. I always throw it there. East Africa. Snap picture. Snapshot. All right? 851 seafarers attacked by Somali pirates in 2012. The corresponding picture in West Africa, fairly close. They are doing, again, a very good job, a very good criminal job. They, are doing, they did something like 966 seafarers, right? Question, is anything missing? This is the human cost, remember. Oh, it's there. Let me assure you. It's there. And the question is still valid. Is anything missing from the last two slides? Remember, it's human cost. Not even one. Sorry? Yes, you are right, but this is what I have on my mind. Sorry? No, no I'm talking about human cost. Ladies and gents, how many people are we here? 200? Not even one thinks as a pirate. Thank God. Where are the pirates? This is human cost. Where are the pirates? You come up with a single study on the human cost of piracy taken upon pirates, hats off. That said, because this uh, presentation is for you, not for me, from the top of my head, in 2011, 111 pirates in East Africa never made, it, never made it back. Three out of every four were taken down by naval forces. One out of four, interestingly, was taken down by fellow pirates. This is the book definition of Wild Wild West in the 21st century in East Africa, with love. All right, how seafarers feel about piracy, Nationality of seafarers uh, attacked East Africa, mainly from India, West Africa, Philippines, all right? A very heavy toll is taken against these people. And unfortunately, the way it has gone until now is out of sight, out of mind. Economic impact, this one very high value criminal venture. And the highest percentage of all, East Africa, 30% security equipment and guards. You are looking at uh, $1.5 billion a year expenses. That's another huge cake, chocolate cake on the table. Nigeria, it's cheaper, all right? It's very close to 1 billion. In this case, half of it goes to marine insurance in London. Hurrah, everybody's happy in the city, making big money. Thank you for your, uh, for your attention. Wrap up my presentation. This is another favorite quote. Don't ask me who said it, all right? Now, for those of you, and I tend to believe not many, who would have an interest to download the presentation, please be my guest. It's downloadable. If you cannot do it, I can do it for you for free. Email me, I'll send you the presentation. Thank you for your attention.